All right, I wanted to record a last segment before we jump into our little scene codings and point out a couple of additions that we can make to the way that our methods unfold. And this is in the case of, let's jump up to creature. So I'm going to expand creature. Notice that what I'm doing in NetBeans, that's control shift enter will shift my current tab into full screen mode. So I'm selected here in creature and I can do control shift enter. What we want to do is remember how back in our creature land we set byte size and percent we put in five. The reason, let's let's understand that a bit. The coder of creature should say, all right, we've got a private member variable. What that means is the user of our class can't just waltz in. So the user of our class creature is creature land. So I can't just waltz in here in creature land and say penguin dot byte size in percent just like we called name we said penguin dot name and then we just dumped in a value Pablo that was possible because name is public anyone meaning any client class can access name can read and write no restrictions but byte size and percent is private I can't just call penguin dot byte size and percent and put in five we could program it that way. If I come here and change this to public, save it, and then come back here, ooh, look, the error goes away. I can just dump in a value. The reason we don't want this to be public is because we want to have some control over what values make it in to our member variable inside the creature. So we're giving the creature some logic of its own. So now if I come back here, I've got a flag, I've saved that. So I no longer, this is an illegitimate call. It'll say byte size and percent has private access in creature. That's a handy message that NetBeans tells us why this is a flag. It's because, hey, there, there is a member variable. I understand what you're trying to do, but you can't do it. It's private. The way that we work with it is we have to go through a public method called set byte size and percent. Now, right now, the only thing that this gut actually does is take in the value and dump it into byte size and percent. But we probably want some more logic in this. So what would be logical to say is before we just set the byte size, before we add it to our member variable, let's make sure that it's a logical number. What would be a logical restraint on byte size and percent? Well taking a negative byte size. In our current universe, we can't just add donut to donut. We can only take away. So what if we do a check? What if we put an if statement, some if logic in here? So what if I come and say, if, so we can say if, and then I'm going to put an expression that evaluates a true or false. If byte size in percent, so if byte size in percent, oops, sorry, if whatever is passed in, if um, this should actually be um, size to set. That way that um, it's clear that we have local variable that's called size to set. And we're going to dump that in here. So size to set. So I just made some tinkering as I go. That's what good coders can do. Well, good coders write it right the first time. Thoughtful coders edit what they wrote. So I can say if size to set, as long as it's greater than zero, we can go ahead and do the operation. So I'm going to move this up. I can delete this comment. Oops. So this comment can die. This is going to get indented. So if size to set is greater than zero, then go ahead and take whatever was passed in. In our case, it was a five and store it in set byte size and percent. And look, we can even be nice and else if it's less than zero we can actually notify the user so we can say uh, and I'm gonna say where this print line is coming from so I'm inside uh, sized donut dot set uh, by size in percent so I'm just writing this so I can see where this call came from because I've got a bunch of methods running around 
And then I can give a message and I can say, oops, uh, let's scroll over. Oops, negative values not allowed. Exclamation point. And I can actually dump this on its own line. This is cool because after, if this evaluates to true, meaning the size is negative, execution is going to skip this line. This line does not get executed, but rather it jumps to the else, in which case we'll print out an error message. And then after we get done with, so this is close if else, this is the close of our method. So the method just returns, having done nothing. If our else is the chunk or the, the block that's executed. So let's save that and I can zoom out. And now let's test our code. Let's try. So this didn't work in Penguin. We can't access a private member directly. We have to go through the door, the public door. Penguin not says by size and percent. What if I try to set it to negative 10? If it's set to negative 10, we should get an error message. And should we be able to eat any donut? I'm still going to do this call. I'm still going to give it a donut. But the creature that we're giving it to, the creature pointed to by Penguin, will not have a value of anything except the initialized value, which in our case is 0 because integers start at 0. But we can initialize it over here. It will still be 0 as of the call here. So when I'm back, uh, when I simulate my eating, the percent remaining, I should see zero. So let's see if this works. I'm going to execute creature land. Here's our output. This is great. Look at this. This is as expected. Now we're getting some really good programming in here. We started in main. We made our creature. And then as we were making our creature, we tried to set the byte size to negative 10, and it hit our else block so that's why we have this line here Rink. value negatives are not allowed and then we trug along you know we still create our size donut we can still call eat donut but when we're eating it it doesn't have a bite size we didn't let the user set it so it stayed zero it's not taking any bites it doesn't know how big of a bite to make so that the donut that we passed in after we simulated the eating Still percent remaining of 100 because the bite size was zero, meaning when I'm here and eat donut, this bat passed in percent, which was supposed to come from the bite size in percent of the creature that's doing the eating here, this is zero. So zero makes it down to our simulate eating method, and the method does its work. It subtracts the, the bite size from the percent remaining. Uh, but the byte size was zero. So I want you to get in the habit of thinking about your method design now from the standpoint of a person writing a method that some other class is going to use. So we want to be thoughtful about how we're giving messages and if we can use our public methods to make sure that the data that goes in our member variables is logical so that our particular class, whether it be size donut or creature, works in logical and expected ways. And with that, we will jump into coding up some of our sample exercises.